I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, dude. Your taco was whack. <laughs> With a capital H, whack. <laughs> and I love Gordon Ramsay too, yeah, by the way. Yeah, 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 I fucking yeah. love Gordon Ramsay. There's this weird phase too where people are going, I don't know how I feel about this and I want to you know your opinion on this. Yeah. Like, I always find fucking uh, white guilt the funniest thing to me because it's... <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> I, know, I know somebody <laughs> that posts every other uh, Insta story post is about how white people should repent for their sins. And he's like the whitest <laughs> motherfucker I ever met in my life. And he's quoting like Martin Luther King, Malcolm oh, X, everybody. Yeah. And he's trying to make white people feel as bad as possible for being white. <laughs> and for me, when I see that, I'm just like, man, you're doing too much, bro. <laughs> like, I understand you want to be on this <laughs> side over here but you ain't you gotta uh, hate yourself yeah, he hates his skin like i think he hates himself like he wakes up and he's like fuck you you know <laughs> the mirror yeah he just looks at himself in the mirror he goes fuck you and your pale ass skin dude you and your white privilege and then he goes and starts whipping himself like in his bathroom and shit like, I'll, I'll show you his post after oh, he's a that's... really cool dude i love the dude a lot but i started looking at his post and i was like damn bro you really hate being white man right like fuck <laughs> Like, what's going and on? I don't think as black people, we're not asking that. Yeah. Right? Like, I think a lot of times all we want is like the mere acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, just all you don't have to. Obviously, you, you know, people be like, I didn't own slaves. Obviously, you, you personally didn't own slaves. Mm -hmm. And maybe your family didn't either. But that doesn't mean you don't reap the benefit yeah. of, of, of white people. Like, I think, like, I was talking about this. This is a really interesting example. You're familiar with Sons of Anarchy? Yeah. Okay, so it's a motorcycle show, if you guys don't know about it, motorcycle show about white bikers and they commit crimes and do all this stuff, right? So I remember, like, after the show went off, I was driving up the 405 and I saw, like, a group of bikers. I'm like, man, they're probably finna go sell some drugs or guns. And I was like, dang, why would I think that? Like, I don't know these guys. Yeah. And I realized the media is the reason I thought that, because I watched that show. Now take that to black people, and how many times on the news you've seen black drug dealers and black people parade across your screen, and, and they're thugs, all the way back to slavery. Like, they want to rape, rape our white women. That's what these black people want to do, when in fact, it was really white slave masters who were raping black women, but they flipped it around mm. and made people scared of black people. So now you have that bias that you don't even realize You've been internalizing your whole life. If you're not black, you're like, man, them people are probably scared. So even black people, sometimes you, you see black people coming with the hoodie and you're like, oh, let me lock my door. Yeah. Because so many times you're afraid of big black guy in a hoodie. He's menacing like that stuff happens to me all the time. We're in stores. People follow us around and all that type of stuff. And you realize like part of that isn't you personally, but it's you uh, being a part of society and society is painting black people, especially black men, one way all the time. You internalize that and there's people big, don't even realize that. There's a huge example of that where I talked about it earlier in the podcast is when I first started. Uh, my best friend, <clears throat> he's Rwandan, big old black dude, six foot one. Mm -hmm. uh, we took this picture in a bar, right? Yeah. It was me. It was uh, his cousins, right? So Dahiro, Katego, Gabo, and me. And then one of his other buddies, was a, he's a neurosurgeon. Mm -hmm. And we just took a picture because I haven't seen these guys in a minute. And they're like family. Like we right. grew up together in Sacramento. Yeah. We took a big photo and then you know, one of the top comments was David's trying to get his his hood card. And I'm like, hood card? Right. I was like, his these two dudes, his mom is the uh, ambassador for Rwanda. Oh He's a doctor, and that's a neurosurgeon. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, but they're black, though. So yeah. they, they're, they're probably from the hood. And nothing about what they were wearing said yep. anything about hood shit. Yep. And it kind of clicked in my head. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to be on some woke shit, but for me, I'm like, I'm in that group of picture, I'm the piece of shit. Right. You know what right. I mean? Were you the content creator? Yeah, I'm the oh, clown. Oh, wow. You're a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, the fucking doctor and a neurosurgeon. So I'm, I'm standing here like, damn, I don't deserve to be in this photo. Yeah. But when you see that, I guess, image-wise, uh, if I guess for people who didn't grow up around black people, it's more like that's the the stuff that they're fed. Absolutely. So for them, what they see is, oh, he's trying to he's trying to up his hood card. Absolutely. I was like, hood card? These are fucking physicians. Absolutely, man. But you wouldn't think that. Yeah. That's not the first thing you think. It's funny because we tour as comedians, me, Tony, Doughboy, and Tahir, mm -hmm. right? Right. So people, I can't even tell you how many times white people would see us in the airport or restaurant and be like, oh, are you guys football players? <laughs> like, do we look like professional? Like, I, look at my body. Do I look like a professional athlete? Are you guys in the NBA? The NBA, no boy is 300 pounds. What about us looks like we are professional athletes? We can't figure it out. That's They're like, man, what funny. are you guys doing on the plane? And I, so I'm diamond on Delta. So I'm always in first class. Why yeah. do you be like, this is the first class line? Yes. It I is. know that's why I'm standing in it. Yeah. Because I'm flying first class and yeah. I'm diamond or I get on at this time. They're like, oh, well, I didn't know because you just assume that you shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about white people. Like, people are like, all white people are racist. That's not true. Yeah. Right. But what happens is 
a lot of people are okay with you doing whatever you do as long as it makes sense that you should be doing it. Mm. Like you can fly on the plane, but you shouldn't be in first class. Yeah. That's where it's you but it, and it usually is mostly white people. Yeah. So when people are doing stuff out of the ordinary, that's when it feels weird. Mm. The whole Trayvon Martin thing is like, well, that you why are you walking with a hoodie in this neighborhood? You don't belong here. And mm. that's what it is. It's 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 the white people feel there's this whole article that was going viral, like, have you ever the title is Have you ever noticed white people never move out of your way? Like on yeah. the street. And it was like all these people were like, Yeah, like it's like I should I belong here and I'm gonna walk. And if you were in my way, then you should move. And a lot of this stuff is subconscious because you know, to be white is to feel like you, know, you belong here and people should move out that. of your way. Uh, <laughs> my friend told me that the, the annoying thing about me, he goes, You know what the most annoying this is when I was in Sacramento. He yeah. goes, Whenever you see a white person on the sidewalk, he goes, you purposely don't move out their way. Right. You don't? I don't. Because <laughs> of that shit. Yeah, they expect it. Because I always had to move out of their way. Yes. That's so fucking funny you said that. Yes. I just had that conversation last yeah. week. He goes, he goes, I know for a fact when we walk on a sidewalk, <laughs> we're not the ones moving out the way because you refuse. I was like, exactly. I refuse. Right. Because why do I got to always do it? Why? And yeah. people, we, we well, well, go ahead. And we think it's polite. Yeah. But you're kind of trained to like, well, you know, let me just get out the way. And a lot of times, and it's fine if everybody does that. Mm -hmm. But this group of people, they don't seem to play by those rules as much as everybody else does. Yeah. And they don't even realize it. A lot of times they're like, I didn't even know. Like, yeah. minorities, we be knowing white people better than they know themselves. <laughs> and that's why I hate the whole, like, go back to your country thing yeah. that people say to minorities. Because I feel like minorities love America more because we see it for what it really is. Yeah. It's not the same for everybody else. So the fact that we love it and we criticize it, it comes from a place of love, not we want to leave. And man, you brought us here. We was in <laughs> Africa chilling. You stole us and brought us and not tell us to go back. You should have left us here. We would have been fine. We was in Africa chilling. We had our own religion and dances and freaking Egypt. You saw what we did? Leave us alone. It's, it's kind of nah, crazy. I can't go back. I've never been there. <laughs> go back to your country. It's like, they don't want us there either. <laughs> right. They don't. Fucking African people hate black people. Bruh, for real though. People African, don't know that shit. No, they do not rock with African Americans. Look at these lazy motherfuckers. Exactly. Yeah, they over here in this country, they think that they could do whatever they want. Exactly. They're <laughs> not playing around with yeah. us. Yeah, so because where are we supposed to go? I had this conversation with my friend Amina and she was telling me like when she first came here, like she heard a lot of stuff about um, kind of the stereotypes with black people, right? Yeah. And maybe for her, and maybe it's because her parents fed her that stuff too. She goes... Yeah, I don't understand what the big deal, but they don't know about systemic, like systemic, uh, like oppression and stuff yep, like that. Yep. But they just see a lazy person, right. and they go, "Well, because African people, from what I've heard from African friends of mine, they yeah. go, they consider themselves immigrants, not black people. Right. Like we're immigrants. Yes, you know, and we have that immigrant hustle and mentality. Absolutely, and a lot of times they do yeah. because when you come from another country to America, you've left everything behind. Like yeah. I, I gotta make it, and that hustle is not off there. We were talking about this off camera, like people who come to LA to make it often work harder than people who were born and raised in LA because they can always go to their mom's house or their cousin's stuff. If you ain't from here, it's either make it or you got to go back home. Yeah. And a lot of times, you can, like when I moved here, I had uh, rented my house out in Washington. My parents lived in North Carolina, full house. Like it's either make it here or no plan B. Mm -hmm. Like you got to make it. So that hustle mentality is even two or three times or 